Today on Dr. Phil. My husband, Sonny, cheated on me. The people that I trusted and loved the most did this to me. The other woman, she's here. My sister slept with my husband. I didn't lie, I just didn't tell her. It hurts when all I do is picture what happened. I started touching her, started touching me. I woke up in shock and I ran out of the room. She didn't run out. They're mad at each other. I don't care that you're mad at each other. You both did this. I'm mad at both of you. This seems like a good idea. Why? Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. You guys are jumping today. I can see that. All right, I got a question for you. How many of you guys have been in a situation where you got rolling along and real early on you got a cue, something's wrong here? Maybe you were dating somebody. Did it happen when you were dating somebody? Yes. And, and maybe they said something. Maybe they did something. You know, I'll just dig a little deeper. No problem. I'll dig a little deeper. Maybe it got to the point you're actually walking down the aisle. You had it happen. Was it you or somebody you knew? You. Okay, here's our first guest for today's show. No. Did you marry him? You did. You married him. Exactly my point. You just keep digging. My guest today cannot seem to stop digging. Okay? That's what we're talking about. They probably thought marriage would be as easy as one, two, three, A, B, C. But sadly for them, the A stands for abuse, the B stands for betrayal, and the C stands for cheating. Take a look. During the entire time that I've been with Sonny, the police have been called over 20 times. When I was just dating Sonny, he was so mad that he kicked in our front door and our bedroom door. She had locked me out of my bedroom, so I kicked the door down. There was no other alternative. When I was six months pregnant, he tackled me in the hallway. I am not physically abusive to Caroline. You don't hit me, you don't push me, you don't pull my hair, you don't flip out. That's complete Twice she's hit me in the face. One time she punched me in the back of the head in front of my sister and in front of my kids. She grabs me and laughs. Yeah, I think I did grab him and he was grabbing me and then that's when he flipped me over on the ground. She'll lose control to where she gets physical and verbal and hits me and then I'll retaliate with a grab and throw her down. He pulled my hair and pushed me back and I flipped over the armrest of the couch. I hit you in the face on accident because I was trying to block you. That happened two times. You're trying to hit me, and I'm grabbing you like this and telling you to stop, and you bite me in the face. Now I don't grab you anymore. Why would I grab you so you can bite me in the face? No, you just throw me over the couch no. so I get out of your way. So yeah, I, I do. You. I pick you up and I, I throw you on the couch because you're irate. You're crazy. Wow. You heard me talking about this at the top, how we see things and just keep going. Did you see things and keep going? Did you see things and keep going? Yeah. What was the first time you thought, this could be not good? The time when we were fighting, um, a little while after we had first moved in together, and front door and our bedroom door were busted down because he was mad. Now see, there's a clue. <laughs> That's a clue that there are problems. D did you do that? Yes, sir. Why? Well, she had locked me out of the house. My clothes were being thrown over the rail. There's a clue. OK, you've each got a clue. Did you ever at that point think, you know what, I might just want to stop this? I did. I left. Um, oh, but you came back. Yeah. Be, you were hardly out the broken door before you came back. Why'd you come back? Mm, he asked me to marry him. He asked you to marry him. <laughs> um, Come on, why did you ask her to marry you? It didn't happen exactly per se like that. It was more like uh, we kept talking to each other and it kept building and you know, like 
I'd say I'm sorry, and she'd be like, you know, I'm sorry too. And it was just a stupid fight that we totally could have avoided, but it happened. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. It and, happened uh, a lot. Have you ever heard me say the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior? Mm -hmm. If you want to know what somebody's going to do tomorrow, look and see what they did yesterday. Because I put together, actually, you helped us put together a timeline. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to go through some of it. Now, you're not going to agree with all this. You're, you're going to have a different version of this. And I'm going to tell you why it doesn't matter at this point. Because what I'm focused on right now is what your perception was. And this is what you believed, and you still did what you did. So your relationship became official back in July of 12. Weeks later, you say you get in a fight and Sonny pulls your hair out. I was laying on the pillow and he pulled the pillow out from underneath me because he said it was his couch and he told me and my friend to get off of his couch. And he pulled the pillow out and when he pulled the pillow, it pulled some of my hair out. Okay, he pulled the pillow out and with it, some of your hair. Okay. So then, you, you leave. You said, ah, you're not gonna pull my hair out. I'm leaving. But then you come back and he proposes. And you say, okay, I'll do it. And sure enough, you guys get married. Now on your honeymoon, the guy that pulled your hair out on the couch, you say, you get in a fight and he leaves you stranded without a car or money for several hours out in the middle of nowhere on your honeymoon. He's pulled my hair out. I've moved out. He's left me stranded on my honeymoon. Let's just get pregnant. January, you're having complications. You say, I need help here. I need to go to the hospital. And you say, will you take me to the hospital, please? I'm having complications here. What did he say? Um, he said he didn't want to go with me because we were fighting. Different version. Doesn't matter. Yeah. The this is what's in her bank. Right. Six months pregnant, you get in a fight. You bite him. Your four-year-old witnesses this, and then he shoves you. Okay. You say he tackles you to the ground. You're six months pregnant. He tackles you to the ground. Then in August, your daughter's born. Cute as a button. Your daughter's born. Okay, so now we have that involved here. He quits his job, you get in a fight in the car. He's arrested for domestic violence, right? We know that because we have the police report here. Fight over a purse, hurt your finger. Then, even though you've been arrested for domestic violence, a few months later, you say he throws you to the kitchen floor. Now, you, this is all your perception. You know all this stuff, but you're hanging in there. And then this happens. And this is a bombshell that not any of this predicted. This was a game changer. My sister Ashley was the maid of honor at my wedding. In January of 2014, my sister moved in with my husband and I because she was having health problems. When Ashley was living with me, I felt like I finally had someone to talk to, to cry to, to have fun with. Caroline's sister Ashley is a bad influence. I can't stand her. I never expected that Sonny would have slept with Ashley. Well, uh, that would be a bombshell in anybody's relationship. But they don't agree on what really happened that night. Surprise, surprise. The details get a little fuzzy because of another letter in the alphabet. Not just A, not just B, not just C, but D, drinking. Take a look. My husband, Sonny, cheated on me in June last year. I blame both my sister Ashley and my husband for allowing that to happen. Ashley said that she does not believe that they had sex that night. He said that they did have consensual sex. I don't even know what to believe. It just seems like so unreal to me. Two months after the incident, I found out what happened. 
That evening, my sister Ashley had already been drinking, and then she started drinking whiskey with me. I got home from work. We started drinking shots, and we had a couple beers. When Sonny and Ashley went outside, he was touching her leg and rubbing her leg and leaning in close to her, like how he does with me. Ashley ended up going into her room and passing out. I actually passed out on the couch. My wife passed out next to me. Then I got up and walked all the way to the bathroom. On my way to the bathroom, me and Ashley meet up. Ashley had a tank top on, a see-through tank top, no pants. We kind of just start touching each other and she knew who I was and she knew what was going on. We had sex in her bed. In the middle of us having sex, Ashley pops up and puts her shorts on and walks outside to the back porch. She looks at me, she goes, we cannot tell Caroline, you know that, right? And I'm just like, no, yeah, I know. I got out of bed and I noticed that the back porch light was on. And so I went to the door and opened it. He was standing there with the beer in his hand and she was sitting on our patio couch. I knew something was wrong, but I never expected that my sister, uh, Ashley, slept with my husband. Okay, tell me how you feel about this. I can't talk about it. I don't like to hear him talk about it. It just makes it worse. The two people that I trusted and loved the most did this to me, and it doesn't seem like they feel bad about it. They're mad at each other. I don't care that you're mad at each other. You both did this. I'm mad at both of you. Why does it matter how they feel? They did this to me. He says he's getting up and going to the bathroom, and he runs into your sister, who has on a see-through tank top and no pants. And he goes, ah. Looky here. And he, he goes after her. I think that he saw it as an opportunity to drive a wedge between me and my sister because he's jealous of our relationship. So I think that he thought, awesome, Caroline's passed out. I'll just go have sex with her sister. But when he told me what happened, all I do is picture what happened. So it plays in my mind like almost every day. It hurts and I don't want to think about it. And, and you say this wasn't planned. No. It just happened. There's no motive for it. There was no intention for me to sabotage her relationship between her and her sister. And again, I hate to blame alcohol, but it played a part. Started touching her, and she started touching me, and... You say you were drunk, but you knew what I, you were doing. Yeah. You knew, I'm in my home, and this is my wife's sister. This seems like a good idea. Why? What was going through my head was, hey, you know? And that was pretty much it. And you understand, she says, she tells a completely different story. I'm sure. Yeah, well, we're going to hear from her because the other woman, the third person in this love triangle, Caroline's sister, she's here. <laughs> and she says her memory of what happened with Sonny the night they slept together is very different from his version. She'll be out right after the break. Caroline's sister, Ashley, is a woman that has no self-respect. After I found out that Sonny had relations with my sister, my first instinct was to blame her. Ashley has a tendency to dress provocatively. The next morning after I had just up with my wife's sister, Caroline wanted to have sex with me in the morning, and I feel like I was obligated to have sex with Caroline just so she wouldn't think that I was cheating on her. It would just ruin the rest of the day. Sadly, in my heart, I already knew that it, the day was ruined. I do feel guilty for having sex with Caroline after knowing that I had just slept with her sister. Do not adjust your set. You heard that right. Uh, my guest Sonny admits to cheating on his wife last summer with her sister. A lot of you might be wondering what Caroline's sister has to say about all of this. Well, she's here. And her version of what happened that late summer night is so much different. My sister's husband, Sonny, is a pathological liar. June of 2014, Caroline and I decided to have a barbecue and we drank fireball whiskey. Sonny had gotten home and suggested we get another bottle. 
we ended up drinking two bottles of whiskey. After we had been drinking, I was exhausted. Everything was a blur. I remember vaguely stumbling into my room and passing out on my bed. Falling asleep with all of my clothes on, and when I awoke, my pants were off. When I did wake up and realize someone was having sex with me, he wasn't in front of me, so I couldn't see who it was. I was very out of it, so I thought I was having sex with my boyfriend. I had turned around. That's when I realized that it wasn't my boyfriend, it was Sonny. I jumped out of bed. I grabbed my pants. I just remember sitting on the back patio, shaking. I was so confused on what happened. And I just sat there, and I just, I cried. I did feel guilty. I believed that it was my fault. Now I'm coming to the realization that's not me, it's him. I was assaulted. I never came out and told Caroline that. I never said those words. Till now, I do feel like I was almost raped. Well, I, I, I'm glad you're here. Um, so he says the two of you ran into each other both on the way to the bathroom. Didn't happen that way? I don't remember that. Last thing I remembered was passing out of my bed. Well, what do you I remember? Don't, I, I remember falling asleep, and I remember waking up uh, with someone behind me being touched. And when I turned around, it was him. And I jumped off of my bed, and I ran out of my room, and I ran into the backyard. And you agree that at one point, during this, you did wind up in bed. Mm -hmm. And you do agree that at one point, she just all of a sudden jumped up and ran out. Yeah, she didn't run out. She just said, definitely not her boyfriend, and giggled, laughed, put on her pants, and walked out. Uh-huh. And got dressed and left. She walked out to the back porch, like she said. Uh -huh. uh, this was in the middle of things? Yes, in the middle of things. Yeah. Um, did, did you wonder why she did that? Mm hmm I kind of just was like, what? What are you doing right now? And I didn't say that. I was just like, what? After she started putting on her pants and walking out. And then I put my pants on and walked out, too. And so the two of you went out and sat outside. I walked Did you out. talk about what happened? Yeah. Well, what did you, do you remember talking about what happened? Um, I vaguely remember him, I remember him coming out and I was sitting there smoking a cigarette and he was saying something about Caroline. Um, and then I think about a couple of minutes later, Caroline, she was on the sofa and she'd come outside. Or she'd come to the door to come get Sunny. Uh-huh. Um, do you remember what you were talking about? I don't really about? remember our conversation, though. No. Uh-huh. So you went from being passed out to rallying, waking up, getting dressed, going outside, and sitting there. That's a, that's a pretty good recovery from pass out drunk to going vertical, getting dressed, walking out back, and sitting down and having a conversation. I mean, yeah, I, w I woke up in shock. Like, when I came to, I was in shock, and I ran. I didn't know what to do. So you didn't know this was him? No. Yeah. H had your boyfriend been there? No. Not he hadn't been I, there that night? No. No. But I'd sta I stayed the night a lot at his house, so I thought that I had passed out drunk over there. I was literally so drunk, I, to I didn't even realize I was So you home. were disoriented as to place and time? Yeah. I didn't even know you, I was at home. You didn't know what house you were in? No. I thought I was at his. I didn't realize I was in my own home. Because you thought, and, okay, so you, you weren't with your boyfriend that night. No. You woke up in bed with your sister's husband that night. You just assumed that you'd somehow been transported to your boyfriend's house and that he was behind you that night. And you woke up in your mind, in your, in your drunken mind, you thought, I'm, I'm not at my sister's house anymore. And my boyfriend, who I wasn't with tonight, has somehow entered the picture and he said, do you believe any of, do you believe this? I looked around the whole house for both of them and I couldn't find them. Didn't you lie to her about this originally? I didn't lie, I just didn't tell her about it. Well, you didn't say, 
just had sex with your husband. My sister Ashley is the person that I love and trust the most, but it hurts that the person that I love the most betrayed me. Caroline's sister Ashley is a woman that has no self-respect. Ashley is very deceptive and manipulative. I would never choose to sleep with Ashley if I was not drunk. She's ruining my marriage. After I found out that Sunny had relations with my sister, my first instinct was to blame her. Ashley has a tendency to dress provocatively. If she would have dressed more conservatively, then maybe it might have played a small role in this not happening. Do you believe any of, do you believe this? I do because We've been best friends our whole lives, and she goes out and drinks and doesn't know where she is or what she's doing, so. Because you've been best friends all your life, you believe her because she's telling you the truth. She's telling you, you think she's well, just no, telling you the truth? no, because I've seen her that intoxicated before mm -hmm. and been in a situation where she doesn't remember what happened mm -hmm. and doesn't remember where she is or... Didn't you lie to her about this originally? I didn't tell her. I didn't lie. I just didn't tell her about it. Did you ask what was going on when you went out there? I kept telling her. You I kept... went out to the patio and you said, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. I was kind of mad because I looked around the whole house for both of them and I couldn't find them. And I'd cleaned up his throw up before I went to bed, got her a pitcher to throw up in. I mean, they were completely... Just yeah. charming evening all the way around. <laughs> but you, when she came out and said, what's going on, what did you say? I don't even remember what I even said to her. I don't even think I really even said much to her. Well, you didn't say, I just had sex with your husband in bed or I was raped by your husband in bed or anything of the sort. No. So you lied by omission. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, and what did you say? Same thing. I didn't. I didn't say anything either. Okay. And, and the next day you were sober, right? Yes. You sobered up. Yes. And you remembered what happened. You knew exactly what happened, right? Yes. So you went to her and told her then. No, I kept it to myself. I didn't tell anybody. I'm sorry. I kept it to myself. I didn't tell anybody what happened. Okay. So you didn't confide in her then. You didn't say, hey. Mm -mm. Heads up here, I, I need to tell you something. I, I was violated last night. I, I you didn't need to know, know this guy came into my room and violated me last night. I didn't know how to tell her. And I didn't, I didn't want to be the cause of any more problems with them. They were already having enough problems. And I didn't want that to be, another, like, that to be an issue for them. Our Twitter's blowing up on this. That Jeanette Fuller says, if you drink so much you can't remember what happened, you need to stop drinking. Uh, at Havens uh, underscore Mary says, well, Sonny, pointing the finger at your sister-in-law does not eliminate your responsibility for any of it. Uh, and at Cobra Girl AZ says, how does one allow themselves to cheat with her sister's husband? That's a double betrayal that hurts like death. Um, ever since the incident between Sonny and Ashley, Caroline says things have only gotten worse at home. We'll hear just how bad when we come back. You said, I'm leaving, and I put my hand on your hand. I did not hit you, and you told the police that I hit you. And you pushed me, and I fell down the stairs. No. Why would I swing on you with our child in your arms? Because you're crazy. Uh, I feel like I, I haven't heard, uh, I haven't given you the opportunity to give me your side of this whole thing fully yet, so I want to do that now. I, I went through the timeline, and I said it's Caroline's timeline because... It's her perception of what happened. I said there'd been trouble. You, you I want to be clear that you dispute some of those things and how they happened. And uh, you've made it very clear in your tape pieces that she aggresses against you sometimes. Uh, I frankly don't think that's an excuse at all. 
there's no excuse for a man to ever put his hands on a woman in anger, ever, for any reason, whatever. Um, but <laughs> certainly, if you're a guy that's our size, I mean, you, you, just, you just can't do that. Um, and you're going to wind up in trouble if you do. But what, what do I need to know to help help this situation? What do you need for me to know? First of all, I want to let you know that it's not a situation to where I have to put my hands on her and, you know, physically harm her. It's her when she goes to swing on me and me trying to stop her from swinging on me. Does he restrain you and, and when he bends your arms down, you bite him? Because he doesn't just restrain me. He's, like, forceful about it. Why is he having to restrain you at all? Because I'm trying to leave, or if he hurts me, I swing back at him now. You had an anniversary recently, right? October of last year, you had your second anniversary. Did you hit her in the face? No. Uh, did you throw her down the stairs? No. Uh, did she kick you in the groin? No, she grabbed me in the groin. Uh-huh. Um, did you try to get a restraining order? Yes. He got it, but he never served me with it. It was never served? No. Because the night that that happened, we both poured beer on each other, and then I came inside because you saw a message from a guy that I was helping at the gym asking about Ashley, and you got mad that I changed my code on my phone because you like to go through it whenever you choose to, and you got mad at me and started yelling at me, telling me that I was cheating on you, that I was sleeping <clears> with somebody else, calling me names, and you went upstairs and you said, I'm leaving. You had her diaper bag on your arm and you had her in your arms. And I put my hand on your hand. I did not hit you. And you told the police that I hit you. I did I not hit you. I admit to hitting you before, but I did not hit you that night. So are you saying that you never were banging finish. on the, your head on the door? Let me finish. I put my hand on your hand and I was begging you not to take her. And you pushed me and I fell down the stairs. No. Yes, I know. No, you will happened. continue to lie about you this. Swung you swung on me. Every... No, I did not. I Why would I it. swing on you with our child in your arms? Because you're crazy. Yes. You get crazy. Yes. You get that crazy. Yeah. You get to that point yeah. where you just start swinging. Your whole but... family protects you. They all sat what are you there doing and watched here with you Caroline? through her down what are you doing here with in front Caroline? of the entire the family. Exact same and thing. Thing. I'm not She's protecting her. To really? Herself for Whose chair is on your side? Whose chair is on your side? I'll move it and sit in the middle. I'm not on anyone's side. It's too late now. It's after the matter. I'll sit, in the middle. I'll sit back there. It doesn't matter. I can that be behind stage. That would be nice. You'd still be out of the picture. Perfect. All right, we know Sonny cheated, but is he a danger? Ashley says yes. We're going to hear why she wants her sister uh, to leave when we come back. Sonny is a very evil, devious person. Him violating me that night was a plan because my sister does depend on me so much. He was trying to ruin that relationship between us. He knew exactly what he was doing and he took full advantage of the situation. Sonny is a psychopath. Caroline is very blinded by his love. One day I will see him on one of those murder shows doing an interview with him and locked in jail for killing my sister. Ashley believes her sister Caroline is trapped in a dangerous marriage and wants her to get out before it's too late. But Caroline says she's not ready to throw in the towel just yet. After fights, Sonny always made me feel like it was my fault because I would fight back with him. Every time after I fight with Sonny, he tells me that he's sorry and that it'll never happen again. But I believe that I needed to work harder to make everything work between us. I asked Caroline plenty of times to leave him. My parents had begged her to go to a shelter and she just kept going back. I was afraid to leave the marriage because we had just gotten married and I didn't want to have a baby by myself again. I raised my oldest daughter by myself and I didn't want this baby to be without. Sonny degrades me and calls me horrible names like bitch and gross and fat. I feel like it's my fault because I didn't lose weight after the baby. Even after Sonny has abused me and slept with my sister, I want to do whatever it takes to make our marriage work. Do you want this marriage to work? A part of me does. 
Do you want a marriage to work? I did. But now you don't? No. And what is it about what she said or she said or they said that makes you not want to make it work? I thought there was a chance that we could live through this. <clears throat> you know, we could work through this and just knowing that there's no way that Ashley can be removed from the picture as far as being the husband in our marriage, there's never going to be a marriage between me and Caroline. Well, what is your ownership in this situation? You said to me at the break, why am I the bad guy here? No, I believe that I am the bad guy in me and my wife's marriage. But right now, I just feel like the show is just making it to where, you know, Sonny's this, Sonny's that, Sonny's this, and Caroline should leave him for this, Caroline should leave him for that. And there's no, there's no Sonny's perception of things. Tell me what you need to have to balance this out right now. The floor is yours. It goes both ways. It doesn't, it doesn't just show, it shows Caroline just saying, he calls me this, he calls me that, he does this, he does that. It goes both ways. It's, it's not just me saying, you know, you're fat, you're ugly, you're a, a bitch, you know? It's not just that, it's more than that. It's her saying, you're, you're being such an, an A word right now and with other profanity words. And then I'm like, well, you're being this. You guys paint me as a bad person. You think I'm a psychopath. You think I'm a lying, cheating bastard. I know that's not who you are. I just don't know what happened to you. But let's not walk away from each other or fight or hurt each other because it's not worth it. It's not worth it for us to keep doing this to each other and it's certainly not worth it for the kids to see this because they're two little girls and then they're gonna want to have a relationship like this. Do you want someone to do that to them? Because I know I don't and I already see it with our older one and that scares the crap out of me because they're so precious. Like, why do they have to see this? Shouldn't. The dynamic of what's going on here is so clear. It is in flashing red lights. I'm going to turn those on and connect the dots right after the break. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do is, um, Ashley, I'm going to excuse you because I want to talk to this couple about their marriage. Uh, I thank you very much for being here and shedding your light on all of this. And I certainly hope you two work to repair your relationship and the breach of trust that's here, because I think that's very important. But I, I, I thank you for coming. You can go right down this way here, and uh, they'll show you straight out. I have... Um, I have excused Ashley here because this is between you two. It's not between the three of you. You need to listen with both ears to what I'm getting ready to say because I'm getting ready to tell you some very important things that you're going to want to listen to several times when you get home. So I'm going to put some verbs in my sentences. I want you to hear them real clearly. Uh, I agree with some of the things he's saying. Um, you're playing this game with sweaty palms. You're afraid to stand up for yourself. You're afraid to stake out your position in your ground other than in anger. You get mad, you, you get angry, and when you do, you get out of control, right? I mean, he's right about that part. You, this isn't, you know, one log won't burn. The two of you fight. That doesn't justify him getting physical with you, but you, the only time you express yourself is in anger. You're scared here because you've loved and lost before. And... You really don't want that to happen again. Because then you didn't lose once, you've now lost twice, and now you've got two, and you can't hold on to daddy. 
And that scares you to death, right? What's wrong with me? How do I explain this to them? Doesn't that tape play in your head? And isn't that why you keep putting up with and putting up with and scared to death this is going to fall apart? Let me tell you, what I fear, I create. And the very thing you fear is the very thing you're creating. You got to have self-respect before you can get respect from somebody else. And you got to respect yourself if you're going to command respect from him. It's not about demanding respect, it's about commanding respect. What your sister did, now whether she knew what was going on at the time or not, you can decide whether you believe that or whether you don't. But she knew it afterwards and she didn't tell you. She lied to you by omission for a month. That's a betrayal. Any way you cut it, that's a betrayal. Do you get that? Yeah. You deserve better treatment from the people in your life. And the only way you're going to get it is when you start giving better treatment to yourself. Sonny, there's a role of the man in the family. You have a job here, and you need to man up and do it. Do not disrespect the mother of your children. Do, do not disrespect your wife. Do not disrespect yourself as a man by doing things that disrespect the mother of your children and your wife. Because when you say something to her, like the things you have said to her, it is at the expense of your character, not hers. You need to learn how to resolve conflict. You need to learn self-esteem and self-worth. You need to learn as a couple to come together and have strength and value each other. You need premarital counseling. You don't need marriage counseling. You need, you need, you need premarital counseling. You don't even know what it's supposed to be. You've got to, you've got to talk about things like division of labor and how to handle money and sex and jobs and geography and religion and in-laws, in-laws. We, we got to have some in-law boundaries here. And I will personally make arrangements for y'all to have this, to, to, to sit down with y'all to resolve these things and give you a chance to make this work. And if for some reason you decide that it doesn't work, then you will have the foundation to co-parent these children from a position of strength and love. But you are so far from making that decision right now. You haven't been married yet. All you've done is been living under the same roof. You have not been married yet. Give me 90 days. Give me 90 days to really establish a foundation here and then make a decision. Will you do that? Yes, sir. I mean, and I mean really work at it. Will you do that? Will you take that help? Will you do that? Will you do that? Okay. And I, and I want you all to tell us how that turns out, okay? Now, I want to remind everyone out there about Robin's resources at whengeorgiasmile.org. It's called the Aspire Initiative, and it's a free curriculum to educate audiences about domestic violence issues from prevention to safe exit strategies. And the curriculum provides engaging educational materials and interactive content, such as quizzes to encourage group discussions, and there's a lot to find out. And Robin, this is all free at whengeorgiasmile.org, correct? Yes, yes it is. Uh, whengeorgiasmile.org, it's in English and Spanish, and it is free. All right, and that's where they can find out about the Aspire app also, correct? Yes, very proud of the Aspire app. It actually was voted in 2014 as one of the two best apps for domestic violence prevention on Capitol Hill. Yeah, so, and, and it is also free. And it, and it applies no matter who is 
doing the violence. So we're not pointing fingers here. We're just saying it's in every situation. Yes. So I, I really want y'all to think about that. And guys, <laughs> you can so make this better. You can so make this better. But remember, I said every situation meets a hero. Let it be you. Decide you're going to lead this family right straight where it needs to go. I want to thank all of my guests today. If you're living in a toxic relationship and can't seem to dig your way out, go to drphil.com, and I'll tell you how. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much. <laughs>